In this video, we're going to consider the effect of op amps finite open loop gain and bandwidth on some popular op amp circuits. We've already considered the impact of finite op amp gain on configurations such as the inverting configuration shown here. If instead of assuming infinite gain, we assume this op amp has a finite gain A, we found that the overall gain of this configuration, instead of being its ideal value, negative R2 over R1, we get this extra term in the denominator that depends on the ratio of 1 plus R2 over R1 and the op amps gain A. We find that the denominator goes to unity as long as A is a lot greater than 1 plus R2 over R1. In such cases, the gain is well approximated by the ideal value negative R2 over R1. So that's the impact of finite gain. Similar analysis can be done for the non-inverting configuration or any of the configurations we've talked about so far. The real op amps have a gain that's not only finite, but decreases with frequency. Shown here is a typical frequency response for an op amp. It has a large value at DC, in this case 100 dB, and then after hitting some corner frequency labeled FB at 10 Hertz in this case, the frequency response starts to roll off at 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per octave. That corner frequency usually arises at a very low frequency and the frequency roll off thereafter is typically very uniform at 20 dB per decade. And that's the case in general for very good reasons related to stability, which you'll learn about later in your study of stability of op amp circuits. We model the frequency dependent gain of the op amp with an expression like this. We see that at frequencies omega far below the corner frequency, omega b, then this expression is closely approximated by. A0, since the denominator is almost equal to unity. A0 is, in fact, the DC gain of the op amp, since that's the value you would get in the gain expression when omega equals zero. And as you see, as we look at frequencies on this plot, which is plotted on a semi log scale versus frequency, and we look at frequencies far below the corner frequency the plot asymptotically approaches that DC gain value, A0. At high frequencies, that is omega way above the corner frequency, omega b, then the expression above is closely approximated by ignoring the unity term in the denominator. And it simply leaves A0 over J omega over omega b or A0 omega b over J omega. So we see that in this part of the plot at frequencies far above the corner frequency, the magnitude of the gain is inversely proportional to omega, which leads to this uniform roll off of 20 dB per decade. It's interesting to also solve for the unity gain frequency that is the frequency where the op amp gain magnitude is exactly equal to one or zero db and we can solve for that using the simplified approximate expression just by equating the magnitude of this expression to one and solving for that. And this approximation is quite accurate in the typical case where A0 is very, very large. Finally, we can rewrite the gain expression 
at frequencies far above the corner frequency in terms of the unity gain frequency by substituting in omega t for a naught omega b. And again, that's quite accurate for frequencies far above the corner frequency omega b. So here again is our expression for the gain of the inverting configuration. with finite gain A. And we can see how this becomes a frequency dependent gain by substituting in our expression, our frequency dependent expression for the gain of the op amp A. If we make that substitution and rearrange a little bit, we end up with this expression shown here, where we've still got our ideal non-inverting or inverting gain in the numerator negative r2 over r1 but now the denominator has some extra terms first thing to recognize is that assuming that a0 is very very large specifically that it's a lot larger than 1 plus r2 over r1 then this bracketed term here is very close to equal to unity. Making that simplification, we end up with this expression shown here. So we see that the inverting configuration with our frequency dependent gain in the op amp looks like the ideal inverting configuration at frequencies where this term is a lot smaller than unity. We can solve for those frequencies by substituting in S equals J omega and we've got this expression here. where we can clearly see that the denominator will approach unity whenever this term here is a lot smaller than one. That is when omega is a lot smaller than omega t over one plus r2 over r1. So in such cases, or at such frequencies, the input output relationship will be well approximated by the ideal result negative R2 over R1. This criteria therefore defines the bandwidth of the closed loop inverting configuration. In fact, it can be shown that the 3 dB frequency is exactly equal to this value omega t over 1 plus r2 over r1, assuming the first order model for the op amp that we've used here. For example, if we consider the inverting configuration shown here, designed to have a gain of negative 10 volts per volt, then r2 over r1 must equal 10. And the 3 dB bandwidth of this inverting configuration would equal the unity gain frequency of the op amp itself divided by one plus R2 over R1, which means omega T over 11. Now in this particular case, the unity gain frequency is specified for the op amp at one megahertz. Therefore, we would expect the 3 dB frequency of the inverting configuration to be a megahertz over 11, which is in fact 
90.9 kilohertz. So if we sketch the frequency response of the inverting configuration, we would find that it's constant at its ideal value, or very close to its ideal value of negative R2 over R1. Here we've plotted it on a dB scale. So that gain of negative 10 volts per volt becomes 20 dB. And be constant around there all the way up to the corner, for the 3 dB frequency, 90.9 kilohertz. Beyond there, it would start rolling off with a slope of 20 dB per decade. Very similar analysis is possible for the non-inverting configuration. So here, consider a non-inverting configuration designed to have a gain 1 plus R2 over R1 equal to 10 volts per volt. So it's the same ideal gain that the inverting configuration on the previous slide was designed for, except because of the extra 1 plus term in the gain of the non-inverting configuration, it means that the ratio R2 over R1 in this case is equal to 9. The bandwidth, 3 dB bandwidth of this non-inverting configuration is related to the unity gain frequency of the op amp, just the same as that of the inverting configuration. And that's not a coincidence. It's because both circuits look exactly the same in the undriven case, that is when we said VI equal to zero. So the 3 dB bandwidth is again, omega T over one plus R2 over R1, which in this case is one tenth of the unity gain frequency. So that's actually a little bit higher bandwidth than the inverting configuration, where we found that it was omega T over 11. And again, that's because the extra one plus term here in the gain of the non-inverting configuration allows us to use a slightly smaller ratio, R2 over R1, to realize the same magnitude gain 10 volts per volt. So the frequency response of this non-inverting configuration, again, is very close to its ideal value of 10 volts per volt, all the way up to the 3 dB frequency using the same op amp as in the last example with a unity gain frequency of a megahertz. This time we've got a 3 dB frequency equal to one tenth of that or 100 kilohertz. And then beyond that, rolling off at 20 dB per decade. 